phones. The Realme 2 Pro, or any of the previous models for that matter, aren't phones that I've ever heard of. Essentially they're a budget line emulating the higher end brands. And this is most notable with the Realme 2 because of the 6.3 inch display with a tiny bezel and a dewdrop notch at the top, ensuring that you have plenty of screen space. For a budget model it looks great, nice and sleek. Of course the screen is only an LCD. OLED is starting to appear on cheaper phones, but it'll be a while yet before that's the norm. One of the more impressive features is that the basic model offers 4GB of RAM, with the other models increasing that to 6 and 8, so you have options depending on your budget, but even the modest 4GB is good enough. Couple that with the Cairo 260 CPU and you have some impressive performance. Another handy feature is the rear fingerprint scanner which is always active, making the Realme a breeze to unlock. Honestly, I cover a lot of budget phones in these videos, but the Realme 2 has some of the most impressive specs for its price. The Sony Xperia XA2 Plus has a 3.5mm headphone jack. Again, it scares me that that's worth pointing out now. That said, that is a really good sign, especially with the Xperia line. My previous experience with them has proven great for listening to music, with a larger range of audio customization compared to other brands. The XA2 Plus is a slight upgrade to the XA2 Ultra, with a bump in specs as well as the screen. It's still a large 6 inch screen, but the Plus has a taller aspect ratio along with a higher resolution. Plus, with that extra screen space comes excellent contrast, so the lights and the darks and the colours will really pop. One subtle feature is that the rear of the phone is curved, slightly, but that slight curvature combined with a matted feel means that the XA2 Plus gives you a better grip and is a lot more comfortable to hold. Now I know that this might be hard to believe, but the Nokia 7.1 is an update of the Nokia 7. I know! Oh. The first thing that stuck out to me about the 7.1 was the battery. It's a 3060mAh, which isn't bad, but it's not great, but it does have fast charging, going from 0-50% to 50 in half an hour. So you gain some, you lose some. At the very least, given that the battery isn't the best, it's still good to see that that has been taken into consideration. What else? Well, a choice between 3 and 4GB of RAM, 32 or 64GB of storage, rear fingerprint sensor, all the, all the basics. Another trade-off is the screen. It's just an LCD instead of an OLED, but the resolution is 2280 by 1080 so you won't get the colors and the contrast of an OLED, but the image is clear and crisp regardless. The 7.1 runs on Android 1, Google's, I guess, modified version of Android. This is one of the better features as it means that 1, the 7.1 will have better performance than if it were running on standard Android, and 2, Google's continued support of Android 1 means that the Nokia 7.1 won't be forgotten in a couple of years. It's certainly a solid phone to pick up for the long term. If you're buying or selling, whether that be films, games, tech or phones, don't forget to check out the website at webuy.com.